Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I feel like it's been so long since I actually sat down and recorded a video for you all, but I want to apologize because I have been absent from YouTube due to the fact that I wait till I get to my 30s to start having allergy issues. I'm sure a lot of you all can relate. The girl has been going through it, but today I will be bringing you the long awaited, highly requested natural hair story going from heat damaged hair all the way to fairly healthy hair because I'm not there yet. I'm getting there, but I'm not all the way there yet. So if you want to see my story, please continue to watch. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as turn on the notification bell so you don't miss when I upload my next video. So I'm not gonna start this video from way back when I was an infant. Nobody really cares about my natural hair back then. But I do wanna give you all a summary of my hair and what it was like through my school age years. So I will insert some photos here while I kinda break it down for you all. So throughout my elementary school years, my mother was the only one that would do my hair. She did not allow me to wear my hair out at all. My hair was very lengthy and very, very thick. For my mother to be able to manage my hair, she felt it necessary to perm my hair. Outside of perming my hair, my mother would use that goddamn hot comb. Y'all know about the high comb. I mean, I feel like it should have came with age requirements. If it didn't, she probably just didn't care. I think nobody really cared when it came down to them neck. They just wanted to get them out of your head. But I am so traumatized from a hot comb. You could not pay me to this day to put a hot comb in my hair, okay? So moving right along to middle school is when I decided to do my own hair. I started to use like gels and jam and that hair wax. Y'all know about the hair wax. That's back in the day when we used to get finger waves and stuff like that and the big fans and burl curls. Some of y'all cannot relate. 80s baby. <laughs> to get finger waves and scrunchies and all of that type of stuff back in the day. So I did experiment with a lot. So I think it was either Monica or T-Bars. Y'all know when they came out with that haircut with the tilted bulb, I got that. So I cut my hair completely off in middle school. I wanna say I was in the seventh or eighth grade when it happened. I'm not exactly sure when I cut it. If I could find a date, I will insert it here. But I actually cut my head completely off and I had it shaved in the back. I had designs all in the shave area in the back of my head. I honestly think it was Monica that inspired me to cut my hair but I didn't realize how big my head was compared to that so when I cut my hair I wasn't really happy about it so I ended up letting my hair grow back out not too long after I got it cut fast forward to high school that's when I actually started to dip and dab in a little bit of color I professionally had my hair streaked and I used to use that uh, what is it called a door I'll insert a picture here but the adore bottle the crimson color it was just this beautiful red but it will always die off in the collar of my shirt and it drove me crazy but I just love the color and I don't know when weaves became a thing because when I was in high school I I don't remember people wearing weaves. I remember people using track and putting like bonding glue and stuff like that on it, but I never was a fan of putting glue in my hair. I did, however, used to buy the synthetic ponytails with the comb and the strap. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I used to just pop them things on the back, gel my hair all the way down, or jam my hair all the way down rather, and tie it up and just smack my ponytail on. And I was good to go. So that's what I would do to my hair when I didn't feel like being bothered with it. So after high school, I was introduced to the Dominican salon. How many of y'all can relate? Let me know in the comment section below but the Dominican salon was everything the prices was very reasonable and they used to use this hot blow dryer along with a brush to pull your hair straight and I don't care how much you felt all that heat was going on your scalp you knew that you was going to walk out there with your hair just flowing and gliding with the wind I'm going to insert a clip here after I came from the Dominican shop just to show you all what I'm talking about the other day and look at this band. <laughs> with my hair being so so thick when they would blow dry my hair or use the blow dry and comb it out so beautifully that my hair would just flow with the wind so I was introduced to the Dominican salon and I lived in there I did not play about my hair being bone straight I remember back in the day when people used to put that orange color wax in their hair I would actually put the wax in my hair and use my flat irons like turned all the way up and hear my hair sizzle because I wanted it that straight and then when I would finish my hair would be like this everywhere I would move my hair would move right with me it didn't have no life to it it was just like all wax <sighs> Okay. <laughs> I can't stop laughing from the last Shut up. So after my phase of going to the Dominican salon, I was introduced to sew-ins and it was just like, ah, from the heavens above, you hear me? You cannot tell me anything when it came down to my weave. Weaves cost so much money, okay? For me, I would do three bundles of hair and a closure. My bundles of hair cost me maybe $200 per bundle. Not to mention, I had to pay about $350 to $375 to get it installed. Weaves became very very expensive thankfully I didn't have to keep constantly buying hair because the quality of hair that I purchased was just awesome so it lasts me for years on years I even still got some upstairs so as of now I 
don't think that I would ever probably ever get another sewing again because I actually looked at a YouTube video that showed me how to make a wig so I made a wig out of the bundles of hair that I had even though the wig no longer exists because I got a hole in my closure the convenience of being able to put it on and take it off without damaging my hair at all or having someone take a needle and go through each braid breaking my hair off nah I don't think I would mess with a sewing again so moving on to within the last three to four years I actually cut my hair back in 2016 I want to say it was maybe March 2016 and what actually made me decide to go natural was I purchased some hair from an online store that I felt highly highly comfortable with because I watched so many YouTube videos as well as read all the reviews because it's like an investment you know when we purchase hair we spend in a couple hundreds you know a couple, couple hundreds so it was definitely an investment so I wanted to make sure that I was comfortable with purchasing this hair online but when I got this hair it was so beautiful when I tell you beautiful it was so much hair and the curl pattern to it was just absolutely amazing so I had my beautician install this hair but I didn't realize how big this hair is and now y'all know I love big hair but this hair was just like Diana Ross times five okay I'll insert some pictures here but I purchased this hair for my birthday one year and I absolutely loved it I had to go back to my beautician to have her cut this hair maybe three to four times before I felt comfortable enough to be able to manage the hair on my own that's how much hair was people would stop me and ask me about the hair and thought that the hair was mine when I didn't have the closure installed I actually wore this hair to Jamaica the DR Cancun twice the Bahamas I have worn this hair has been all over the islands you hear me this hair was just so beautiful so long story short I had the hair installed without the closure and I realized how good my leave out went with this hair when I would wet it and I was like oh Oh, let me find out my hair would curl up like that so when I took the weave out and I put the same products in my hair that I would use in the weave this is how my hair turned out it's nothing like nothing like the weave okay nothing absolutely nothing like the weave my hair was so damaged that it just didn't even have a curl anymore it just had this like little funky wave to it and Nah. So what did I do? I was right back up in the Dominican salons, okay? <laughs> so not too long after that, I tried to put faux locks in my head. That's when faux locks first started coming out. So watching YouTube, thinking I could do everything on my own, I put these faux locks in. It was beautiful. However, I put them in so tight that my eyes was pulled back like this, and I had all kinds of bumps going around my head, so I took them out. And I tried to reinstall them again, and after that point, I was like, you know what? The hell with this. I'm cutting it off. So I'm going to insert a video here of me actually chopping my hair off. I just removed the heat damaged ends which was maybe three to four inches of hair all around my head I just cut it completely off because I was so frustrated that's what made me cut my hair the video that I will be inserting here actually has music to it y'all know OG Genesis cut it cut it y'all know that song so it has that so I'm gonna read that out but I want to insert this video here so you all can see I recorded it on snapchat because this is when snapchat first started coming out and I recorded it on snapchat for my friends to see so it's not really good footage I had no clue that I was going to start a YouTube channel because I probably would have recorded it more better than what it is however I do have some footage so here you go That's the back of it. It just looked like I cut off a lot. Probably two and a half inches. So what I did was spray the area with water, then I went through with a little bit of conditioner, and whatever didn't curl up, I cut it off. And that's just how I cut my hair at that point. I just didn't care. I just wanted all the heat damaged areas to be removed from my head. The last time that I put a perm in my hair, I was actually pregnant with my daughter. Although they don't recommend you to put perms in your hair when you're pregnant, but that's what I had to do at the time, or at least I felt like it was necessary because my hair was just so nappy. So as of today, my hair has been natural for over 13 years. And when I say natural, I mean no perm. When I first cut my hair, I was very, very strict. I wouldn't even blow dry my hair. I didn't even want to go close to the oven when the oven was on. I would wrap my hair up. That's how dramatic I was about heat damage. I didn't want to put my hair back through that stress again, so I stayed away from heat completely. I did not believe 
play about my curls because I just love them that much. And I still did. I still did. But that first year and a half, no, baby. You couldn't get me to put anything in my hair. The only products that I used for the first year after cutting my hair was Shea Moisture. So I was introduced to the Shea Moisture brand by Jessica, aka Mahogany Curls. I'm pretty sure all the naturals that's watching know who I'm talking about. If not, I will leave a link to her channel below in the description box. But she is just absolutely amazing. So she introduced me, not her personally introduced me, but I was such a fan of her channel that I knew so much about Shea Moisture brand through her. So that's the only product that I actually put in my hair for the whole entire year. Even to this day, if I feel like my hair is not at its full potential, I always seem to lean more towards Shea Moisture, the hibiscus line, to bring my hair back to that beautiful state that I wanted to be in. When I started my natural hair journey, I had a bad habit of constantly cutting my hair. If I seen a curl out of order, I cut it off. I did not want no crazy looking curls in my hair. I wanted all my curls to be uniform, all my curls to be perfect. I would just cut it off. If it was out of order, you had to go. I literally had to hide my scissors from myself and that's how my hair was able to grow. I cut my hair actually when my bangs was wet so when it dried up, it was like all the way up here. Like my bangs was, was all the way up here. It was a mess. It was a whole mess. And no, I shouldn't insert a picture but I will if I can find it. Somebody tell him to take this young ass jacket off. <laughs> Turn around so they can see. Put them bangs back. <laughs> Put it on face camera. Let them see them bangs, Rick James. Talk about my bangs. Let them see. I'm, I'm in a transition stage, okay? They they growing back. Transition stage. So in the midst of trying to learn what to do with my hair and how to style it and all this, that, and the third, I used the LOC method. For you all that don't know what that is, curly girl method. So I stuck to that for a period of time. I wanted to switch it up. So I was like, well, let me try the LCO method. Maybe I can get better definition. My curls would turn out better. So that's what I did. As of today, I don't really use oil at all when I'm putting products in my hair. Unless, like I said before in a few of my other videos, if I go too heavy with the gel and I need to break that cast, then I will put oil in my hair or if I'm taking out a twist out or a braid out I would put oil in my hair and alleviate extra frizz or if I had a wash and go for days on days on days I would put some oil in my hair just to kind of give it a little bit of life you know what I mean just to give it a little bit of life. I just find it so funny to this day. And if some of you all can relate please let me know in the comment section below. But when I first cut my hair everybody was like Oh my gosh, girl, what are you doing? Did you really cut your hair? Girl, sis, what, what, what is this? Like, natural hair. I used to get that. Because you know you go through that phase, what we call the ugly phase. You'll see some people that have dreads that feel like they're going through that ugly stage when they first twist their hair. At least that's what all my friends that had dreads would say. This is the ugly stage, so don't take no pictures of me right now. But you went through your little ugly stage after you first cut your hair. Or well, some of us, not all of us. On the stage that you don't really like too much when it comes down to your hair until it fully grows out the way that you like it or you find products that really work so I went through that little phase and those same people those same people it's currently in my inbox asking me the products that I use because they want to go natural that we have this natural hair movement people is more open to it now which is amazing to me I think it's awesome I think we should embrace our natural hair so the best advice that I could give to someone who is in the middle of transitioning their hair from being heat damaged or very unhealthy to natural healthy curls or just natural hair in general I think the best thing that you could do is find out the porosity of your hair that is the most important thing when it comes down to being natural or trying to get healthy curls because knowing the porosity of your hair will let you know what products will work for your hair to give you the best results and the best overall health of your hair so I will be doing a video soon here on my channel to show you all the different tests that you can do to find out the porosity of your hair so stay tuned for that if you have any questions definitely feel free to leave a comment below or inbox me on Instagram I will get back to you as soon as possible but I do have a hair video as well coming up this week so make sure that your bell notification is on so you don't miss out when I upload that video but I just wanted to share my story with you all I'm going to be currently working on these allergies because I don't know what's going on but I got to get it under control I have so much vlog footage that I need to put out for you all I am NOT a daily vlogger I only feel necessary to vlog if it's something special that's going on or a special moment that I feel like I want to capture however I do have a lot of footage right now that I do want to share with you all so stay tuned for those vlog videos it was so nice sitting down to record this video because I truly miss you all but thank you so much for watching and if you are new here don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you all in the next one